Hey everybody, my name is Joshua Snow and I am starting this new channel and I've started this new little side business called The Art of Dead Things and basically uh, I'm going to make stuff. Um, this could be fossil preparation, this could be entomology related, um, the pinning and hydration and uh, diorama creating uh, with insects. Um, this could be taxidermy related. This could be skeleton articulation related. This could be skull cleaning related. Um, that's kind of why it's called the art of dead things because it's creating or bringing back to life or bringing back to view something that uh, has expired. Um, whether that's recent and modern <clears throat> or ancient and fossil. But uh, with all of that comes a lot of processes and a lot of things that need to happen and be done um, so that everything can come out with a good result. And so this channel is basically to teach slash capture the creation of all of these things. Um, I've sort of haphazardly been making uh, little time-lapse compilations for uh, Instagram and have occasionally posted them on TikTok, but I'm just not a social media guy. And so my, my daytime space, my photography uh, career world, whatever you want to call it, um, is a very separate place from this but occasionally it might cross over because I like to photograph um, the specimens the insect specimens the fossil specimens and um, my finished work so you might end up seeing some of that too along the way so hopefully you guys find this content interesting and I don't bore you to tears and you'll follow along on the adventures because it could be weird so uh, yeah We'll see you guys there. All right. Here is my very easy beetle slash insect humidity chamber. It's a small Tupperware container. Um, this could be humongous. This could be tiny. It kind of doesn't really matter. It depends on what you got. Uh, what you can get and what you're going to put in it. Um, in this case, I'm just going to be putting some beetles in here. And this is how I build one for just beetles. I'm going to take some sponges. Um, these were not used for dishes. They've strictly been used for insect hydration. Um, and I cut them to fit because I'm neurotic about it. Um, very simple. The reason I do this is because the sponges can hold a ton of moisture um, without it, they're actually needing to be standing water. Um, so it's a really good medium for um, the liquid part of this process that it doesn't necessarily have to um, touch the specimen. Uh, beetles, it doesn't really matter. They're hardy enough that this won't matter, but uh, it's just a really good way of holding moisture. So if this is something that needs to go on for a couple of days, you don't have to worry about the moisture um, not being enough. I let my tap water get as hot as possible. And at my house, this is scalding. This could probably burn me if I were to touch it at its hottest. Um, and I'm just gonna let that go until it's as hot as it can be. Let them completely get saturated. Pour off the excess. And just make sure that they're warm. Okay, see? Not a lot of standing water. What is there can be poured off. Take a couple of paper towels. This is going to kind of just be for the top. And just 
clean, clean. Let's put that in there. Let it get saturated while we get our bugs. I was given these specimen uh, this morning by a new friend, um, the owner of a soon to be open um, curiosity shop where I will be teaching insect and entomology workshops. Um, I just like to poke a couple holes in these. Now these <clears throat> were collected in some cases in the 70s, in some cases in the 80s, and I think there were even a few in this collection that were older than that. Um, so we're gonna put that guy in there. Some of these I haven't even identified. Um, some of them don't have any provenance. But none, none the, the same. They're gonna all be treated the same. So here's uh, some sort of dung beetle, all folded up. So I'm just gonna leave them like that. Honestly, <clears throat> if you think about it, these bugs are um, up against the elements of nature, and they have evolved you know, to be water resistant. And so, water and, and moisture is not gonna hurt these guys at all. And now, if you leave them in too long, of course, that could change. Here's another dung beetle. I'm gonna leave that guy just like that. Now, these guys are really dry. You can think about the age of them. They have been desiccating for a long, 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 long time. So I'm just gonna re-moisten this paper towel. Again, you don't want it like sopping. I'm just gonna set that on top. Yep, directly on top. So it looks like this. And now we're gonna take the lid. I like to use airtight containers. Um, you know, obviously this one's got a couple holes in it, but I've got some tape on there. It's just an old a fossil came in this. Um, the base was screwed, flipped over, but uh, it works great as a hydration chamber. And now I will just leave it like this, sealed up on top of a mug warmer set to low. Um, and by tomorrow morning, these guys will be like new beetles again. Very, very easy. Now, what if you're not working with beetles and you're working with Lepidoptera, butterflies and moths? Well. Here is a few more specimens that were given to me um, by my new friend Alex uh, to see if that these specimen of this age can be viable for rehydration and pinning. Um, some of them were not in great shape, some of them are, so we've got kind of a mixed bag to, to see how these things turn out. Um, but you know, some of these guys are, are humongous. I've got one here. A species of silk moth I haven't identified yet, but it's massive. You know, I've I've got big hands, and this thing is enormous. Um, some species of atlas moth, I'm sure, uh, I can't tell if this is its coloration, or if this is so old that it has discolored. Um, my suspicion is that this is just the color of it. Uh, once it's softened and I can get the wings open, I can identify it. But you know, they're huge, so. Tupperware for this many of this size specimen is not easy to come by. And what do you do? I'm using a 13 by nine baking dish and you can kind of use any vessel that will hold water. And uh, you might wonder, well, how do we keep the moisture in? And the easy solution to that is plastic wrap. In my case, uh, some press and seal. Um, it'll keep a good seal and uh, I'll be able to wrap it around these awkward shaped handles. Um, but obviously, you know, we might not have a million sponges for this. So uh, what I like to do is first line the whole bottom with paper towels. This is gonna be our substrate for holding moisture. And just fold them to fit. Don't have to be perfect. It's good. Put a few more in there. Okay, 
okay now we don't want to lay the specimen directly on that so I use scotch Bright pads because they're not super absorbent um, unless they're submerged so really like whatever side you get wet is gonna be the side that's wet and the other side could, could really stay dry and this is sort of a barrier between the soaking wet paper towels and our super dry insects. So I'm first gonna let the water get really, really, really hot again. When it gets really, really, really super hot, Soak up that hot water. Again, we don't necessarily want there to be a ton of standing water. That'll work. And these are really easy to cut with kitchen shears. Fungicide, something that can happen with a rehydrating insects, especially if this process needs to drag out a couple of days. Um, fungus can grow. Now, that's a, kind of the reason why we use, well, I use hot water and I try to keep them in a warm place is to kind of expedite this process so that mold doesn't grow. But even still, I always prepare myself with some isopropyl alcohol. Doesn't need to be a lot. This is just to kind of, as this sort of evaporates um, and condenses, it'll all kind of mix in there and intersperse. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Now we'll just lay these in here. Press and seal. It doesn't have to be this. This is just what I have. It just works great though. So, like its namesake, it likes to be pressed and sealed. And so, I like to put it under tension. Really make sure you get a good tight seal. And there you go. Now I'll probably stick this next to a heating vent. Um, not too close, but it's still really cold here in Tucson. So um, that'll just help things. And probably tomorrow evening, since these guys aren't covered with a wet paper towel like the beetles are, these are gonna take a little longer because we're relying purely on atmosphere. So. These will probably take till tomorrow night. I'm probably gonna leave them in for two full days because of the age of them. Um, but we'll see. We'll check them in two days and see how it goes. 24 hours later. Now let's check on our makeshift hydration chamber. 
Now I don't want to try to avoid getting this water to fall on the specimens, so I'm just going to be real careful and just slowly lift one side in hopes that the surface tension will stay long enough to get that water to just drain down to one side. And it didn't work, but that's okay. Butterflies can withstand the rain, they can withstand some moisture, it's not going to kill them. Well, they're already dead, but you know what I mean. So, here we go. If you can squeeze their body and it gives, then you know they're ready. So I'll just take some butterfly forceps here. I just want to spread the wing just to see what we're looking at here. Look at that. Water beads right off. So these guys will be fine. They're ready to pin. And yeah, great news. been 24 hours and we're going to check our beetles. Look at that. Needs a little more time, but this just goes to show you that even ancient specimens can be viable. And you can literally, you can smell the dung on this guy like it was collected yesterday. Let's check this guy. Look at that little roly poly beetle all unfolded. Unfortunately, these guys are missing their tarsi. They're missing their, their little clawed feet. Um, they have some of them. That guy was missing all of them. Let's check this guy. Fully, not surprised on these really, really old specimens that they they will almost completely come apart. You can see this guy's head almost came off. Uh, it's really easy to glue them. Um, if they haven't come off completely, then you can pin them in place and they'll just dry that way. But yeah, beauty.